can come from behind a primary win can be a lesson for other underdog candidates. One candidate running for Congress in Arizona was pretty much under the radar until an ad ran. Take a look. Meet Pamela Gorman, candidate for Congress in Arizona 3, conservative Christian, and a pretty fair shot. I'm Pamela Gorman, and I approve this message. You gotta love it. Pamela Gorman certainly gets your attention with the ad. She joins us now from Phoenix. Whose idea was that, Pamela, the idea of that ad? You know, that ad actually came about because I had some volunteers that said, listen, Pamela, you've got 10 people in this race. You're better than all of the other nine, as we call them, the pack. But nobody knows that because we're the outsider candidate. We're the anti-establishment without the big money. And they said, let's just put a video together to show people that you really are the Second Amendment protector. You really, I, my family actually enjoys the shooting sports. And we're, I think I'm the only candidate with a concealed carry permit who actually owns a firearm. So they said, hey, let's put this together and let's show people. And honestly, I never imagined in a million years that it would be played around the world. I actually got interviewed by a film crew from Spain this morning about this particular video. I, I, now I've seen folks fire a pistol up, but what, what is that machine gun you have? It looks like an old Tommy gun. It is actually, it's a Thompson submachine gun. It is not the one used by the mob made famous in the Chicago you know, street riots. It actually uh, is the one that was used by our military in World War II. And it was, a friend of mine has a terrific collection of historical firearms. And he was kind enough to take my son and I out. That's my son in the uh -huh. video. Uh, take us out and let us just have fun, you know, shooting some historical firearms. We had a blast. I mean, you can tell from it, it's fun. Anybody who can shoot a Thompson submachine gun and not at least smile. I mean, I was giggling. It, it, they, call it, they call it the machine gun smile in the gun world because you can't help but smile when you pull that trigger. All right, now beyond weapons, beyond the Second Amendment, uh, we were talking with Ken Buck about details about how the government is spending money, about how that's driving us all broke and driving us all nuts because they're not listening inside the beltway. I take it that is your message as well. Absolutely. And it's important to remember that while right now it's a Democrat problem, the GOP owns part of the problem. You know, they had control for many years and they were spending like drunken sailors as well. And I think it's important to know that right now this country wants to send the right people there. We want to fight to take back this country from the stronghold that it's under right now that's slippery. It's on a slippery slope towards socialism. And we don't want to see that. And I think the voters are crying out for not just Republicans, but for actual conservatives. And I certainly fit that bill. I've got a record that shows it. You can look at independent groups that have looked at my record. You don't have to take my word for it. But most importantly, I have faced my own Republican Party. You know, sometimes they are the problem. All right. And in Arizona, when they wanted a tax increase, yeah. I said no. Well, uh, let, me, let me just bring Ken in here. Ken, uh, would you have any advice for Pamela? Because you, you had the same sort of problem fighting kind of the party establishment, didn't you? I, I did. And let me just say one thing to Pamela. Uh, my wife also has a concealed carry permit, so uh, we could be related, Pamela. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. great. I think that uh, the, my, my advice to you would be go, girl, go. Uh, you know, we need to make ah, sure that we you. keep fighting the Republican Party. That's, that's the key is we're going to move the Republican Party. We're not going to move towards it. And, and people, right. correct me if I'm wrong, Ken, but I, I, I get the sense from your campaign, people said you made gaffes because you spoke off the cuff so much and everything, but it didn't, the voters didn't care. They want somebody who's able to speak off the cuff, who, who doesn't rely on teleprompters to speak. I think they're looking for somebody that's authentic, and I also think they're looking for someone that's going to act the same way in D.C. that they're acting here, and they don't get that from a canned candidate. Pamela, I got to ask, do you, yeah. do you do well on the stump, just reading off their, their just uh, saying things off the cuff? You know what? If you talk to the people that try to write speeches for me, the problem is I have a real problem remembering and reciting speeches. I'm always off the cuff every time. I like to know my issues, and that way I don't have to memorize lines. And, you know, the thing is I've got experience. I've worked on the issues. I don't have to memorize talking points like all of my opponents. And I think that's really important because I think you hit it on the head. People are tired of, they know when you're doing talking points. They're not fools. I think you so. Know, and they want to see you talk real. And I think that that's what Ken did, and it makes a big difference on election day. By the way, one of your opponents is, at least his dad is pretty well known. He's been on Fox Business a couple of times. Ben Quayle, his father, of course, was Dan Quayle, former vice president. We just want to run a little bit of his ad uh, and get your opinion on that. Roll the tape. Barack Obama is the worst president in history. 
and my generation will inherit a weakened country. Drug cartels in Mexico, tax cartels in D.C. Okay, well, Pamela, you, you get the idea. I mean, is, uh, is your message, that. that's a pretty tough message. How can you out-tough Ben Quayle's message? Oh, my gosh. I, I don't know if I could stay awake for the whole commercial. I'm glad you only paid a small portion of it. Ooh. But, you know, we have a problem when you can, we call Ben Quayle here Hillary Light. You know, he came to a state with nothing but a name and a lot of money, and he's trying to buy a seat like Hillary Clinton did. The difference is Hillary Clinton had some actual experience in public policy. This kid's got nothing. He's got, you know, when he grows up, he might be a terrific congressman, but we need to, we need to Pamela, find tell out us what, what he's about. what you really about. think. <laughs> boy, oh boy. No, Pam, I think that Pam, right now that we're finding out opponent? that. Uh, no, we we had we had some differences, but uh, I think now it, it's it's better and we're moving forward. I, I think that's the key is to make sure you don't go after your opponent so bad that you can't get the support when you win. Well, Pamela, just leave the guns at home when you go to debate uh, Quail. All right. Promise me you'll do uh, that every time. OK, I've got nothing against the young man. Pamela Gorman, Ken Buck again. Ken, congratulations. Terrific stuff. We thank you for coming here again. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank well, you very much. Thank you, Pamela.